The ancient Egyptians are credited with inventing many of the beauty products we use to this day. The portrayal of their pharaohs, members of the noble class, and even the faces of those who have passed away are beautifully detailed, enhancing each feature with prominence, clearly with the intent of showing off their looks. You may be asking yourself, why did the Egyptians care so much about their appearance? So much so, that we still associate Egypt with glamour and beauty to this day. Let's find out. Just before we dive into this topic, if you're interested in early access to videos and live chats with the creator of Intrigued Mind, consider subscribing to our Patreon. Your support will greatly help us keep the channel producing more intriguing content. The Egyptians have a long history when it comes to beauty products. As early as 6000 BCE, the pre-dynastic people living on the Nile River's fertile banks used scented oils and ointments to clean and soften the skin. Fragrant oils were used to mask body odor and various dyes and paints covered their bodies. Archaeologists have also been able to determine that the Egyptians of this era used an assortment of creams made from jasmine and lupine aimed at protecting them from the harsh sun and dry winds. When the people of Upper and Lower Egypt eventually united over 5,000 years ago, this began what archaeologists refer to as the Dynastic Era, during which major advancements in almost every facet of society occurred. While many of us are aware that the later Dynastic Egyptians invented items such as writing paper and the Nilometer, did you know they were the first to use cosmetic makeup? One of the most prevalent beauty products used throughout the vast territory of Egypt was coal, an organic eyeliner that's been used for over 6,000 years. It was produced by mixing together burnt almonds, oxidized copper, ash, lead, ochre, and a few other ingredients before being mixed with oil or fat, which produced a cream. The coal was used to enhance the beauty of the eyes and give them an oval shape. But it also had a few practical uses, the most important being it actually protected their eyes from the sun. Generally, coal was stored in a small stone pot and kept inside an elaborate case made of silver, ivory, or wood. Coal was a rather expensive cosmetic product and was usually only affordable to the upper classes of Egyptian society. However, the peasant class had their own, cheaper variant. Yet, to this day, researchers are unsure of what ingredients were used in its production. Alongside the coal, Egyptians had various different blends of makeup which would have accompanied the eyeliner. Women, and some men, would apply malachite, a bright green paste made from copper minerals to their faces for color and definition. Another example is Galena Mesdemet, made from a mixture of copper and lead ores, and applied for the same reasons. The Egyptians had an assortment of utensils used specifically for applying their cosmetic products. Makeup brushes were made from the Salvadora persica tree, whereas coal was applied with a very thin stick. And, just like in modern times, makeup and utensils for its application would have been brought to social gatherings and parties in case a quick touch-up was required throughout the evening. Generally, they would have been placed in a wooden box and positioned under a seat at the table. Archaeologists know so much about the cosmetic products of ancient Egypt as within burial sites of the dynastic era, these items, alongside cosmetic spoons, are found as grave goods. As the Egyptians applied a vast amount of cosmetic products to their faces, they took precautionary steps to ensure their skin stayed glowing and free of premature aging and wrinkles. Various creams and unguents were applied, of which the most popular was almond, castor, or moringa oil. Honey was used as a skin moisturizer that would both help to heal and fade scars. These creams and oils would have been kept in fashionable jars, often portraying the Egyptian deity, Bas, the god of fertility, childbearing, and joy. Egyptians weren't only obsessed with looking good, they also wanted to smell good throughout the day. By the dynastic era, a wide array of perfume recipes existed. However, Kifi was the most desirable. This particular scent was achieved by mixing together myrrh, pine resin, cardamom, frankincense, juniper, mastic, mint, and other herbs. Written records have suggested the scent was elevating and those that could afford it were deeply envied by those who could not. Less expensive perfumes would have been available for even the lower classes in Egypt and were made from flowers and herbs. The ingredients of the perfumes would first be ground into a powder and then combined with oil or fat for application. As we can surmise from the various beauty products used in their everyday lives, the Egyptians cared a great deal about their appearance. At events, everyone would be wearing a form of coal, and fragrant perfumes would have filled the air with irresistible aromas. But one factor we've yet to consider is that all of the cosmetics would have been accompanied by some of the most lavish jewelry of the era. Again, just exactly what you wore depended on your class. The rich adorned themselves in vast swathes of gold fitted with precious stones, but the poor didn't have to go without. They imitated the rich by wearing jewelry of a similar nature, however, it was made of beautiful colored glass. One particular item, worn by the pharaoh of Egypt, set them apart from the crowd. 
They had a specific kind of headdress known as a nemesis, and it was a symbol that represented the divinity of the pharaoh, who was considered an incarnation of one of Egypt's gods. It was beautifully designed, often in a striped pattern and extended down the back of the neck, which was supposed to represent a lion's tail. Our next item may surprise you a little, but believe it or not, wigs were also a large part of beauty during ancient times in Egypt and served various functions. The most important was their role in preventing the spread of head lice, but they also provided a level of comfort in the arid climate. While initially made of human hair in the earlier years of the dynastic period, following the arrival of the Hyksos and their horses around 1500 BC, wigs were then fashioned from the hairs of this animal. Depending on what kind of event they were attending would ultimately decide which wig an Egyptian would don. A specific wig would be worn during a social event, and a completely different style would be used during a family gathering. As in all other areas of Egyptian life, depending on how deep your pockets were ultimately decided how fancy your wig would be. The best of them all were adorned with fine gems and splashed with expensive perfume. The dynastic Egyptians didn't only want to enhance their beauty through various cosmetic products, their personal hygiene was unmatched around the world. It probably goes without saying, but considering the Egyptians' infatuation with their presentation, you can only imagine how uptight they were about personal hygiene. Due to the hot climate in which they lived, it's been estimated that most of the nation would have bathed at least twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening. However, some suggestions believe it could have been as many as four times. The first thing every Egyptian did in the morning was bathe. No matter the class, every home was equipped with a basin and jug, which they used to wash. A simple soap was made from a mixture of beeswax and water. However, some references suggest natron was mixed with animal fats and used to clean the body. Bathing in the morning was considered a holy ritual to the Egyptians, but the second most important time to wash was when one returned from their evening gathering or social event. They would remove their wig and bathe once more to remove all the beauty products of the day before they settled down to their final meal. Bathhouses were also popular for those seeking to enhance their skin's vitality and beauty. Here, the Egyptians would bask in hot steam and add essential oils. Even thousands of years ago, people knew the benefits of aromatherapy. When it came to staying fresh throughout the day, natural deodorants played a huge role in the lives of Egyptians. They were made similarly to perfumes, but typically, they were a lot less fragrant. While there were likely tens if not hundreds of recipes, one interesting prescription taken from the Hearst Papyrus describes a recipe for preventing the odor caused by sweat. The text recommends mixing lettuce, incense, myrrh, and an unknown plant before rubbing it on the body. Juices from various fruits, accompanied by other spices, were also used to prevent body odor. Our next fact may surprise you, but did you know the Egyptians were as adamant about brushing your teeth as your mother was when you were a kid? The dynastic people are credited with the invention of toothbrushes. It's thought they were first created in the early dynastic period around 3000 BC and would have been fashioned from frayed twigs and finished with papyrus strips that worked as bristles. On the other hand, toothpaste had been used for thousands of years before this. One recipe from the dynastic era calls for a mixture of mint, pepper, rock salt, and the leaves of the iris flower. The Egyptians would brush their teeth every morning before they left their home, but this wasn't all they did. To ensure they had fresh breath throughout the day, they carried mints with them, which were made in the comfort of their own homes. Frankincense, cinnamon, lemon, and cashews were ground into a powder and mixed with honey, which served as a binding agent. These small candies would have been taken with the Egyptians wherever they went, and when they needed a little fresh hit, they would have sucked on their mints. It's clear the ancient Egyptians went to great lengths to ensure their appearances were presentable and up to scratch each morning, and this went for both sexes. More so, it was as equally important for the dead as it was for the living. One needs only observe the smooth and serene faces and prominent eyebrows carefully painted onto various sarcophagi lids and wooden coffins. From first thing in the morning until the last action of the evening, personal hygiene and cosmetics were a part of everyone's daily rituals in Egypt. But why did upholding such a standard of beauty take up such an important part of ancient Egyptians' lives? While we may suggest that looking good in Egypt was based on factors that we still use today, such as feeling good and a boost in confidence, the Egyptians had a few more reasons than this. They were a deeply spiritual culture who believed that life on earth was but a preparation for eternity with the gods. Their daily rituals of bathing, shaving, and the use of various beauty cosmetics stemmed from a prayer in the revered Book of the Dead. It claims that one could not speak in the afterlife if they were not clean and presentable. So, by upholding good standards in beauty and hygiene, ancient Egyptians believed they were essentially preparing themselves for the afterlife. And that's our video on the cosmetic and beauty practices carried out in ancient Egypt. 
Do you see various similarities to your morning routine or what you may put on your face and body before a night out? And are you surprised about the level of hygiene that existed over 5,000 years ago? Let us know all your thoughts in the comment section. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments below.